Hey, welcome back. Now let's turn our attention to making the seat. Bringing up the gizmo once more, and from the gear, choose polyplane. Weld the plane on the x-axis. Start masking points and using the gizmo to create the base shape. Drop in four edge loops using insert multiple edge loops. Turn on symmetry in the x-axis and start positioning those points. Go ahead and extrude both sides of the mesh. Unmask the edges and move them down with the gizmo. Now we can rotate the model down about 3 degrees. Unmask the points and reposition them to match the side of the seat. Now we can use the clip curve brush to carve the seat's top. Reposition the points to match the reference from the top view. Since we're about to repeat a couple of steps for the next few minutes, let's take a moment to revisit the importance of the blockout stage. When you're starting a new 3D model, it's a lot like sketching. You want to keep things rough to start, nailing down the basic shapes and sizes. This is called a blockout. You could either go high or low with your blockout, but I generally keep it low, even when I plan on dynameshing it later. The thing to remember is not to get caught up in the tiny details just yet. You're going for broad strokes here, the big picture. A great upside to this is it keeps your software super responsive and easy to work with because fewer polygons means less strain on your system. The best part about this stage is flexibility. If you feel like shaking things up or you want to try a new approach, no big deal. You can make those big changes and not have to stress about ruining any intricate work because you haven't got to that point yet. Once your blockout is looking good, that's when you start diving into the details. You know the basic structure is solid, so you can just let loose and have fun with it. Plus your blockout keeps everything proportionate and to scale. Doing low poly blockouts is like an early warning system. It's easier to spot potential issues like wonky topology or symmetry issues early on. These can turn into major headaches later if they slip under the radar. Another bonus to working with low poly models is it helps you develop a better eye for form and volume. When it's time for texturing, low poly models are like your best friend. Making UV maps for them is usually a walk in the park, which is a real time saver. So starting with a low poly blockout helps you keep your eye on the ball, makes your workflow smoother, and gives you the freedom to experiment. Plus it sets you up for success when you're ready to dive into detailing. However, there are a few times when you might choose to skip the low poly blockout stage. Like if you're planning on sculpting a high res character or object that has tons of intricate details. For this scenario, you might opt for a higher poly base mesh or use Dynamesh to pull out the forms. It's super handy for organic models where it's more about the form and fine details rather than neat topology during the blockout. Then there's the concept phase. You're bouncing around design ideas trying to see what sticks. A low poly blockout might slow you down here. You could use Dynamesh or maybe even Sculptures Pro mode just to let loose and sculpt freely. Z spheres are another interesting case. There's this cool feature in ZBrush that lets you create base meshes in a flexible, intuitive way. If you're going the Z-Spheres route, you might not need a traditional low poly blockout. And finally, imagine you've got a pre-made base mesh or scan data you're importing into ZBrush. Well, you'll probably skip the low poly blockout and get straight to sculpting or modeling on your pre-made mesh and worry about the topology later. But remember, it's all about what works for you depending on the situation. Different projects, different artists, different studios, and different end goals 
all mean different workflows. The important thing is to find a rhythm that works for you. Let's first mask these edges here and then invert the mask and run a polish by feature. Make a few minor adjustments to the points with the Z Mahler brush. To create a nice curve on the back, slide the edges over. Then turn on dynamic and press crease PG. Let's add some supporting loops around the poly loop. Next we'll unmask the back polys and run a relax. You'll find this option in the deformation palette. It's the same place Polished by Features is located. Let's use a low intensity on the smooth brush to clean up the surface imperfections. Slide the edges a bit more to help with the angle fall off. Increase the smooth subdivisions to 4. Turn off dynamic and then choose extrude all polygon. Press flip and then crease PG. After you unmask the corners, give them a slight upwards rotation. Finish off by a light smoothing to blend the transition nicely. It's all about the subtle changes here to make your model look just right. <laughs> 